Welcome back to the Border Patrol on Sports Radio 810 WHB. Stephen St. John and Nate Bucati with Jake Gutierrez on this Thursday, June 10th, 2021. We're always happy to be joined by our friend Rob Riggle, who's in studio with us now. Rob, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm, I'm just admiring your hat and your sweatshirt. It's, That's right. It's awesome. Aren't those awesome? I tell you what, the, I, I've got my uh, Monarch gear. I've been sporting it a lot lately. It's too. incredible. It's the best. You got to go to the team store when you go out to Legends Field and get your Monarchs gear. Yeah. I wear it all the time. And I saw uh, you with at the uh, 15 of Mahomes uh, charity golf tournament yeah. with wearing uh, that same wearing hat. The hat. Wearing the hat. I think we're that exact same exact, hat. You that's got that's on. why I wore it. I had to yeah. go. Out. Rod Riggles wearing it. I got to get it now. <laughs> so how was that experience? Uh, playing in the 15 in Mahomes golf tournament in uh, in Hawaii. It was awesome. It was everything you'd hope it'd be, uh, and and it was such an honor to be invited. You know, uh, I was thrilled that uh, uh, Mr. Mahomes uh, reached <laughs> out and asked me to uh, uh, you know host the event that night, and we had a blast. We you know we raised a lot of money, and and uh, they had great sponsorships, and and I just you know I think uh, I think obviously I think very highly of. Patrick Mahomes. Oh, so do we. Uh, that is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> not just as a, uh, not just as obviously a quarterback and, a, and an athlete, but I just love the fact that he's embraced philanthropy uh, and that he's uh, embraced uh, the, the mentality of giving back. I think it's just he demonstrates leadership all the time, whether it's on the field or off the field. So it was an honor to be part of that. It was an, an honor to lose money to Patrick Mahomes. It was a, always an honor. Always an honor. Look, that, I dine out on that all the time you know i talk about losing <laughs> losing to him at tahoe i've been talking about it since i lost to him last right. year um and i was winning through 15 holes just so we're clear i so just i happened? lost 16 16 17 and 18 quite literally right the last three holes i unraveled like a folding chair i just I completely <laughs> lost you it. dumped to him i did I went, I went double 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 and i think he went par 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 and he just swept it he took it all back he closed the show. He closed it. He closed out. That's what Mahomes does. He closes. Right. Yeah. He closes. He he gets coffee. Coffee's for closers. That's right. So big weekend, and so let's let's get uh, to what's going on uh, with you in, in Kansas City. We'll talk about uh, Holy Moly season three here in a little bit. But first, you're going to be out. We mentioned the Monarchs. You're going to be out at Legends Field at the Monarchs game tomorrow. And so tell us a little bit about that. Your chance to go out and uh, and see Rob Riggle tomorrow at Legends Field as uh, the Monarchs take on the Houston Apollos. Uh, good time start at 5 o'clock with the game starting at 7. And I know you're excited about going out there and supporting the Monarchs. Absolutely. Um, I actually, I, I, you know, there's so much history uh, behind the Monarchs' name, you know, and, and, mm-hmm. and I love uh, what they – stand for what they do i love minor league baseball i just love i love the whole atmosphere of it and the park has been renovated uh, out there um and it looks great the team's looking good i don't know it's just fun and it's to me it's such a uniquely kansas city thing uh so I've, i i like going out there and enjoying games i remember when they were the t-bones uh and so now mm-hmm. i'm really proud that they're the monarchs and their gear like like i'm, I'm looking right. at your gear and i'm like I, I know it sounds weird, but I love their gear. I love the K through the C. It, it really is a good-looking thing. And so, anyway, I support their gear a lot. Absolutely. And so for people that want to go out there, happy hour specials from 5 until 6 o'clock out of the ballpark include $2 beers, dogs and pizza slices, $5 Bombora drinks. There's going to be a live DJ, pregame skydivers, of course, baseball, and, of course, uh, Rob Riggle. You can get your tickets, 913-328-5618, or just go online to monarchsbaseball.com and have a great time. And I work with the Monarchs at Select Games, and so I'm going to be out there. We're going to have a Border Patrol day at the Monarchs coming up on Wednesday, and then I'll be out there on Father's Day. So I've had a chance to be out there with my family for a handful of games. And uh, like you said, it's an incredible atmosphere, all the renovations, to see the Monarchs uniforms back on the field. Yeah. It's so much fun, and it's yeah. a great spot out there in Legends. It's also, it's, let's just be honest, it's a lot of entertainment for your money. That's right. <laughs> you, got, you got skydivers. You got skydivers, for crying out loud. You got baseball, uh, professional baseball, and you got uh, uh, the, the food and the drink. Is, it's pretty inexpensive. Like, that's... That's a lot of uh, it's a lot of value. Sorry, it just is. No, you got a big family, you know, like Nate or I. You take them all out there. I know uh, you can take your kids out there and have some fun. Anytime you want to go out to the Monarchs game, it's a great time. Nate Ducati. It's in my hometown of KCK too, by the way, which I love seeing uh, that entire area just thriving the way that it is. And look, going out to like a major league baseball game is awesome. 
it's really expensive. Yeah. You know, like I just I witnessed that this past weekend. Right. <laughs> and uh, you can uh, you, you can go out and have uh, just as much fun going to a Monarchs game for a fraction of the price. And uh, you get to be outside. Yeah. You get to be around people. You get to be entertained. All those things. It's Big sporting uh, event, too. Yeah. You know, sporting yeah. events. Just be, getting back out yeah. there and being a, a spectator sporting event is awesome. And we realize how much we missed it, right? Yes. Like, we never really learned to live without it. Oh, yeah. I... I I think that's been the hardest. There's well, no, I shouldn't say that. Uh, this pandemic has sucked. Mm-hmm. No matter how you cut it, it's been yeah. painful for a lot of people. Uh, it's been it's been deadly. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, I'm so glad to see that. Hopefully, that we're coming out of it. And mm-hmm. and one of the signs of of that is a return to athletic events and theater events and concerts and concerts. Yeah. And so that that fills me with optimism always. I remember uh, you saw me, hopefully you don't remember too much of this, you saw me have an emotional breakdown during the divisional playoffs when the Chiefs were down, I think, 24 nothing to the Texans. And it was, I mean, we can look back and laugh now, but at the yeah. time it wasn't no. pretty. I was, no, it was I, very... I was with my son. Right. I was with my son and... Uh, I think he was frightened of what he saw. Well, so. it, everything happened so fast. I mean, we were down 24 to nothing. Right. And it's the middle of the second quarter and our, our heads are spinning. We're, I mean, this was our year. What is ha- I mean, it, it was... I have never been more knocked on my heels than that, than that moment. And I remember looking at my son, and, and he was he's he was young at the time, and I think he was 11 at the time, and uh, you know he started to get the quivering chin. And I was like, all right, let's just – I said, hey, 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 let's change it up. Let's change it up. We're going to uh, uh, rally caps, turn their hat around. Let's get out of this place. We're going to go over to some new seats. So we, <clears throat> we literally walked around the stadium, got some new seats, and sat there for a minute, and it happened. The rally started. And I saw the look in his eyes, which was awesome because he was uh, – I think that's when he started to believe in miracles. For me, it was 1980 uh, Lake Placid, uh, the U.S. <laughs> yeah, Olympic hockey. Yeah. That's when I believe started to believe, like, miracles can happen. I think when he saw that comeback, he realized, oh, miracles can happen, and it's never over till it's over. And, like, he learned a valuable lesson in not quitting that day. Yeah, I had yeah. my sons with me. They were very accusatory because you know, you said this was our year after last year when having the championship. Like, hey, hey, it's a second quarter. I'm like, oh jeez, because I, I just built them up. They're gonna be winning this, and they're gonna go yeah, to the yeah. Super Bowl. And then weeks later, when I saw you down in Miami, yeah, and then I looked at it and said, this is kind of a far, far, uh, a far cry from 24 nothing. That's right. I mean, like we, we still couldn't get over. They were there. Yeah. And then, like you said, just right after that, I mean, we come back to Kansas City, go to the parade, and then. Everything shuts down. Yeah. I mean, it was right after the right. Super Bowl. It, it just all shut down. So it was 2020 was the weirdest year. It was really, it was full of the unbelievable highs and lows. And so let's talk also, uh, everyone has grown to love Big Slick. And this year's going to be no different. For more information, go to BigSlickKC.org. Big Slick, virtually talented show, which is going to be this Saturday at 7.30 p.m. Streaming on the YouTube and Facebook channels. Tell us about this year's edition of Big Slick. Yeah, well, this is our 12th year, which is amazing to me. And you guys have been there pretty much since the beginning. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So for 12 years, we've been doing this uh, event. And, you know, it's it's to benefit Children's Mercy Hospital, which is very special to Kansas City. It's a Kansas City treasure. And nobody's going to take care of it except us. So as Kansas Citians, we need to, to weigh in on this. And. And that's why Paul Rudd, Jason Sudeikis, Eric Stone Street, Dave Keckner, and myself and our families got together and, and, and started doing this event. And we bring in our celebrity friends normally to play uh, out at the K. Uh, we play a softball game, and then we have a bowling tournament the next day, and then we do a show on auction. That's usually the live weekend event that we did for the first 10 years. Last year and this year, we've been forced because of the pandemic to do virtual shows. So uh, we haven't had the, quite the same you know, lifeblood, but I think we've done a pretty good job of, of keeping, the, keeping the event alive. Um, and, and it's to great credit to our sponsors, who are amazing because they stayed with us, uh, to the people of Kansas City, uh, to the families, to the volunteers, everybody who's worked to make this thing happen. So just nothing but total gratitude. But what we're doing this year is the virtual. We're doing a virtual talent, talent show. So we've asked a lot of our friends to, you know, submit, quote, audition tapes, and, and, uh, and I think you're going to see some, some fun stuff. So when you say we've asked a lot of friends to submit tapes, you mean like your celebrity friends? Yes. Like the famous people that... Uh, yes. Because I was allowed to play in the first ever Big Slip, uh, Slick Wiffle Ball game <laughs> uh, that took place at yeah. the Little K. Yeah. And uh, 
that was the only one I ever got to play in because you guys got all the big We started, time. It started growing yeah, from there. Real yeah. celebrities started coming to town yeah. after that. So it was like, yeah, you're not needed anymore for this, um, which is awesome because you, you guys. Uh, we, hear, by, by, we hear that every year. Like, yeah. I guess they're not going to call me this, yeah. but like, I don't think they are, mate. Oh, I don't by think the they way, are. Man, I, I've been bumped off of late night talk shows. Yeah. It happens. You know, it happens. You know what? I thought maybe it was because I started a, a benches clearing brawl with Paul Rudd in the first inning of that game because yeah. he drilled me on the leg with a pitch. Well, he but, deserved uh, to be charged. Right. That's yeah. right. You weren't taking it. You yeah. were like you had my back yes. in, a, in a second, yes. but um, so a like not not like people like me and Stephen, but a list celebrities that you guys are friends with are going to do talent show stuff. We hope so. Is basically the, yes. The game we've plan we've here. asked them to, to to send us some stuff. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, I, I think it'll be fun. It, it should be a lot of fun. And uh, you're right. It's uh, it's come a long way. I think the first year uh, we did it, I was shooting a movie called The Other Guys mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. with Will Ferrell and. We used to play poker every night on the set. Not every night, every Friday night, we'd get together and play poker at the director's house and uh, or apartment. And we, um, at the end of the movie, I just said, "Listen, I'm doing this thing in Kansas City. I, we've never done it. I have no idea what to expect, but it's a poker tournament. You guys want to come?" And Will was one of the first guys. He said, "I'll come." And I, I remember sitting there looking at him, thinking, "That's amazing. I can't believe he's coming." So he came, and it really right. helped that first oh. year. So, so I was actually going to tell you this story. So my son plays uh, you know, little league baseball, yeah. and there's a kid on his team named Zach Chen, and so his jersey says Chen on the back. And every time he comes to the plate, I go, "Come on, Chen!" <laughs> and no, none of the parents. I'm not sure they know why I'm doing that, but I can't help myself because of that. Like that classic. Moment. Come on, Chen! Here yeah, you go. there it is. <laughs> And that all started in the dugout suite. Yeah. Right. And, we, and there's so many things that happened in that dugout suite uh, at the K. One was, come on, Chin, Bruce Chin. Yep. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we just started, you know, come on, just getting on him, right? <laughs> yeah. He's and then, loafing. I think yeah. that's what the he ump. Saying. You guys yeah. are on the ump, And then we, too, and then we got on Gene Lamont. Uh, Gene yeah. Lamont. Because he was like the third the, base yeah. coach for Detroit. <laughs> yeah. And so he was right in front of us. And his, yeah. the name Lamont was right there. And so he was Ooh. as close as you could get. And so we were like... Well, he's he's on the wrong. He's wearing the wrong uniform, so we just got in his hip pocket and stayed there all night. You know, come on, Lamont, that's Bush League, that's Bush League. I remember you guys kept doing the imperial chant, but you were like, da da da, 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 da Gene, Gene Lamont, Lamont, Gene Lamont, every time he walked out. And finally, Johnny Damon was playing for the Detroit Tigers at the time, and I remember like Damon would wave at us and stuff, and as he was headed out to the field or whatever. Finally. Like around the seventh or eighth inning, he stopped and told Gene what was going on because Gene was like, "Who are these guys?" Yeah. They had no idea. The yeah, whole they've been time. in my hip pocket all day, just riding me. And finally, Gene gave us because we were like, "Turn around, Gene. You know you want to look at us." <laughs> and finally, he turned around after Johnny said something to him, and then he gave us a wave. And I mean, we were then we loved him. They were like, "You're the best, Lamont." You know. And then now he's now I guess recently he joined the Royals organization or a couple years ago anyway. That's, that's incredible. So anyway. hey, hey, I wanted to say this. So um, to, to be serious for a minute about what you guys do for Children's Mercy, I, I, I had a personal experience with this when my 18-month-old son a few months ago got a very expensive ambulance ride down to Children's Mercy. He was having a choking episode at home. Oh, wow. And we, so my wife um, took him. He, he was breathing, but he was having difficulty breathing, and he was, he was you know choking on something. So she took him to the urgent care out here, out south, and... Um, I'll never forget. I mean, I got the. By the way, he's fine. Everything Good. turned out to be okay. But she called me and said, um, "They think he needs to go to the emergency room downtown, and they don't think it's safe to put him in a car seat right now because he's clearly having a problem breathing. So he needs to go in an ambulance." And that's the only time in my life. I have three kids. That's the only time in my life where my child's been loaded into an ambulance sure. and and taken somewhere. Jeez. And and I. Remember, I had to call my father-in-law to say, like, hey, will you please come watch my other kids while I go downtown? And I thought I was, and I was going to try to keep it really calm and not freak him out. And the next thing I know, I'm just crying hysterically while I'm on the phone because all of a sudden I'm thinking to myself, I can't picture this room without my son coming home. And that's the first time that had ever really been forced on me. And when I got down to Children's Mercy and my son turned out to be okay, I mean, we were up till 3 o'clock in the morning with him there, but looking at all those different rooms and all those different parents – who are facing the scariest night of their life and who knows where that night is going to take them from there that place is magical 
the way they treat the parents, the way they treat the kids, the experts that they have. Like, you're scared for your child's life, and, and, and you want the most qualified person in the world to be in charge of trying to do the diagnostics to figure out why he's having a tough time breathing right now or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. What you guys do gives us the opportunity to have a facility like that for every one of us parents out there who have the scariest night of our lives. And I was thinking about you guys when I was on my way down there because I was like, man, thank God for this place. And thank God for people like the Big Slick who raise money for Children's Mercy so that we have. So I want to say that and for everybody to support what you guys are doing right now, please do so because it could be you and that and, and your kid in that ambulance at some point. That's amazing. That's an amazing story. And thank thank you for saying that too because that's, that's, that's one of the reasons that this started was because – 2009, I think uh, Children's Mercy asked me to host their Red Hot Nights event, which was a you know a black tie formal event, and it was a fundraiser, and I I did, but they had me telling a bunch of corny jokes, you know, and stuff, and I, but the best thing they did was they took me on a tour of the hospital, and I saw what you're talking about. I saw the doctors, I saw the nurses, I saw the patients, and then I saw the parents, mm -hmm. and I'm a parent. Yeah, and I, you know, at the time I had little ones, and I, I, I just remember thinking that, but for the grace of God, that could be me, yep. sitting there, and so then I was like, all right, I'm hooked, I'm in, you got me, but let me come up with another thing because I don't necessarily want to host that event again. It was a great event, it's a fun event, but it just it wasn't. I said, let me come up with my own event, and then uh, my brother and I, my brother-in-law and I, uh, sat down at the Lake of the Ozarks on a dock, and we were talking about what can we do, what can we do, and I said, well. <laughs> Uh, let's do a poker tournament because I know I could. There's a bunch of Hollywood degenerate gamblers we can get out here <laughs> uh, to come to come play poker. And Harris was here and stuff. So I said, let's just let's do that. We'll start with that. And then I ran into Paul Rudd at the Daily Show Christmas party and asked him if he would do it. And he didn't even hesitate. He's like, absolutely, I'm in. And then uh, I called. I said I called Sudeikis. Uh, I told Paul I was going to call Sudeikis because I knew him from SNL and and uh, Jason was in also in a heartbeat. And so that's how it all started, you know, and it, it started because I saw for myself firsthand and also the fact that no child is turned away. Yeah. You know, you know, and it, that requires a lot of independent funding. So that's why it's important for, for us to show up for Children's Mercy. Um, and, and, and you mentioned, you know, 12 years now with Big Slick. Haven't you haven't you found that the celebrities and the friends that that have come to Kansas City and experienced this and visited Children's Mercy and been a part of our community? They, once they've experienced it, they love it, and they want to come back, and they see why we all love to wear Kansas City on our shirts <laughs> like we are. You know what I mean? Like, we're Absolutely. so proud of Kansas City, and we want to show off Kansas City to everybody because when they see it, they fall in love with it like we have. That's And that's been one of the, the, the really bright po points for me is I've always been super proud of Kansas City, always. And just like Paul, just like Jason, just like Stone Street, just like uh, Keckner, we're all super proud of not only the our sports teams, but the city as well and, and the people here. So to bring all these Hollywood and New Yorkers and bring them back here and just give them a, a taste of Kansas City for a weekend and they get to meet the people and they get to, you know, they it never fails. They all, they call us the next year and say, can I come back? Can I come back? And that's why we've gone from, I think the first year we had eight celebrities counting Paul, Jason, and myself, that first year, I think we had eight celebrities come back for that. And last the, the last time we had a live event, Big Slick 10, uh, we had 45 celebrities come back, you know, or come to it. And it's because each year we, you know, we try to reach out and bring in new folks and recruit new folks. If I, if I do any project with anybody, they get invited. You know, yeah. even if I barely yeah. know, I'm like, I'm like, hey, you know, that's, I did a movie with Knoxville and I was Johnny and I was like, he's like, so we're doing this thing. When are you coming? He's like, I'm in, you know, and, it just, and then they want to come back great. and they want to come back and yeah. they want to come back. And so and then it, then people start to know each other and you make these relationships. And it's it's so it's really fun and and it, it is special. And and the celebrities love it, so it has grown. That's why the ro the roster spot you probably got bumped. Is I got bumped it's real quick. It's gone up yeah. to forty five. Yeah, you know. yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I'm and I'm I'm happy to be bumped <laughs> for the guys that you guys have. And and you know we talk about Sedakis, um, his show the best. It, 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 I've watched it twice. Yeah. I watched the first time through with my wife, and then the uh, the second time through with yeah. my kids. And I know they're filming the second season. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to plan a watch party for the season premiere with the Sporting Kansas City crew and all yeah. that stuff because yeah. it's a soccer thing, Ted Lasso. Yeah. But you talk about this, the civic pride. 
there's Kansas City Easter eggs all over that show. Right? Well, he's like, so good about that. I will, yeah. Jason, again, Paul, Jason, all of us, all the hosts of, of Big Slick, we love our town, and we, and we always try to wear something yeah. You know, that has a KC or so, especially if we're making an appearance on a television or movie and, and we can we can we do. And and he does that. You know, he was the coach for the Wichita, Wichita State, State Shockers. Yep, right. Yep. And and he Just always like incorporates the, little KC. You're right. Easter eggs. The whenever he's on his laptop, you haven't seen Ted Lasso yet, Stephen, but whenever he's on his laptop. The background screen on his laptop is a picture of Arthur Bryant's barbecue. Uh -huh. You know, just like little things like that that only those of us from Kansas City would even have any idea what that yeah. is. But every one of us goes, oh, wow, that's awesome. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and he's got that T-shirt. I saw him in one episode. He yeah. had that T-shirt that said. Um, Joe uh, Arthur Gatestack. There you go. There you go. It had all the different uh, or a lot of the different yeah. uh, barbecue yeah. places here. So And Holy Moly Season 3 next week. Yes, that's premiere. right. Season 3, uh, Holy Moly comes J uh, June 17th. Uh, it's going to be holier and molier than ever before. Uh, we had a lot of fun this year. We added some new, some new holes uh, that'll be very dangerous, but a lot of fun to watch. So do you consider yourself a, a sports broadcaster now, too, <laughs> basically? Like a play-by-play or a color analyst Color, now. Color commentary. Yeah. I think my, my job is to react to what yeah. I see and, and, and have a lot of fun with it. Joe Tessitore is the true professional. He's, he's awesome, He is a way. professional and really a fun guy. He's a fun he gets it. He gets comedy. He get. He understands what we're doing, and he's he's really good at what he does. He's a professional sport. I mean, this is what he's been doing his whole life. Yeah. But he has a great uh, sense of play and a lot of fun. So he's down for a good time. You know, yeah. I, I love working with him. I love Joe Tess. I, you know, I'm, I'm a lifelong boxing fan, and he's one of the best oh, boxing yeah. commentators awesome there boxing. is. And so I was lucky enough to ring it out for a card on ESPN. It's probably been about 12 years ago. It's something I just grown. That's a bucket list, right? So I'm getting ready to do it. And then I'm just about 30 minutes before I'm ready to either walk out of this auditorium <laughs> or lock myself in a stall. And Joe Tess is doing the the play by play, and he took time and talked to me. He said, "You know what? You're ringing out some four. It's going to be great." He just said the right things. You've always got to have yeah. someone to say the right things. And it was it was it was one of the best nights of my life. And it was because he kind of just talked some sense to me. I love Joe Tess. Yeah. Up to the ring, makes... Teddy scorecard 58-56. Let's hear what Stephen St. John has to say. There's Joe Tess. And so I love Joe Test. And I love and so some of you said mentioned some of the some of the holes. Agony of defeat, turfing USA, Putasaurus, the Parkade, uh, ho ho hole, cornhole, donut. We gotta watch all this to, to yeah. see the Pecker, which is one of them. I'm not sure wow, about hello. that one, but I'd like to see it. Yep. So uh but mm. Nate said something that was kind of funny when you come in, he goes, My kids love holy moly. And he goes, Oh, and then Nate's like, Well, well I do too. But you love hearing <laughs> that. You like you when they you can find something where everyone in the family can agree, like, hey, we're all going to watch this. My girls like to watch it. But you you like to hear that, that everyone wants to watch. Absolutely. Right? If, if you can pull off a show where uh, um, everybody can watch it ain't and easy. everybody can enjoy, right? then you've done something, in my opinion. Because uh, it's not, you know, usually you gotta, you're got you appealing to uh, one quadrant of the you know population. You're not able to appeal to all of them. Uh, so I... I if people love it, uh, it makes me super happy. Yeah, when you got the 18-year-old, the 12-year-old, the parents all want to watch it, then, yeah. like you said, you've done something. Yeah. And so, so again, uh, tell us uh, what we can expect for the Big Slick Virtually Talented Show streaming on the YouTube and Facebook channel Saturday at 7.30 p.m. for people that want to tune in. Yeah, tune in. Uh, it's going to be fun. There's going to be uh, a lot of celebrities. There's going to be some musical acts. There's going to be uh, uh, some, hopefully some sports celebrities and... Uh, we're just going to have a good time. Basically, we're going to have a good time, remind people that we're here, remind people that Big Slick's here. Uh, there's going to be a chance, uh, hopefully, for people to to make a difference, make a contribution. There's going to be auction. There's going to be all kinds of things that you can do, fund and need stuff. So there's there's ways to help, and uh, uh, we hope people tune in and enjoy it. It's going to be a good time. It's the best we can do in the pandemic. And, and it's pretty damn good, I can tell you that. And we really appreciate, obviously, everyone in the community appreciates it when you can, what you continue to do to, to support Children's Mercy and support uh, Kansas City, the place we all love. And before that, tomorrow night, Friday night, out at Legends Field for the Kansas City Monarchs game, you can, it says, Let's Go Bananas with Rob Riggle. And it's benefiting Big Slick for Children's Mercy. And so you can call 913 328 5618 for tickets or just check him out online if you want to go out and watch the Monarchs, enjoy some great family fun. And you're going to be out there. And when you go someplace, you're going to have fun. That's I, right. I, why go? Why go anywhere if you're not going there to have fun? That's right. And so skydivers, 
$2 hot dogs for the happy hour between 5 and 6. So if, you, uh, if you're if you looking for plans, don't look anymore. You got them for uh, tomorrow night. Mark, you want to give away any tickets for tomorrow night? Okay, how about, what do you want to give away? Couple couple pairs to the Legends Club. I'm just putting words in his mouth. He's just said yes. yes. You gotta say yes when you ask him on the radio. <laughs> That's right. All right. Yep. So we'll give away put him on the spot because it would be it be kind of a weird feeling. No, nah, we're not giving away tickets. All right. <laughs> so a couple of tickets <laughs> up in the Legends Club where you can eat and drink and be merry, and it is one of the best places to watch baseball anywhere. I can promise you that. Yeah. And Rob, you're gonna be out there having some fun again, raising awareness for Big Slick and raising money for Children's Mercy. And as always, man, it's so cool to see you continue to invest in the community and see um, that's got to be great for you too, yeah, to see all the things you've done over the past 12 years I, I, I love this town it's good to be home I, I love being in town and Friday night is gonna be a blast out there so I hope people come out that's Rob Riggle a good friend of the show and more importantly a great friend of Kansas City don't forget to tune in on uh, on Saturday night go out to the Monarchs tomorrow night get more information you can follow them on Twitter if you want to get the more uh, information on the game at KS City Monarchs and you can also go at Big Slick KC to find out how you can watch uh, everything virtually on Saturday night Rob we hope to talk to you again real soon my man awesome thanks for having me guys that's the one and only Rob Riggle you can call in 913-3810-810 to win those VIP tickets tomorrow night so you can go bananas with Rob Riggle at the Monarchs game on Sports Radio 810 WHB